Hey guys, so aside from being the world record holder in Donald Duck going quackers for the PS2, I'm also a huge car seat headrest fan, so I thought it would uh, make a fun video to go through a tier list of where I rank each car seat headrest album. Um, and yeah, just give reasons why. So here we've got the um, tier maker, and it looks like we've got all the main albums. So we've got uh, at least all, all the Bandcamp albums. Um, so I'm just going to go through them one by one. I think the only one missing is Live from WCWM, uh, which actually wasn't released on the Car Seat Headrest Bandcamp itself. So, you know, whether you want to count that as an actual Car Seat Headrest album is possibly up for debate. Um, I'll probably still give an opinion of where I think it should be on the list. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to go through this. Obviously, it's my subjective opinion. Um, if you disagree then that's fine we can have different opinions on where we rank these in fact it's, it's kind of a bit of a meme at this point that um car seat headrest fans have terrible tier lists and no one agrees on where the album should rank and that's because all these albums you know they vary through different styles and uh, and different themes so yeah so i think i'm just gonna start at one end of this and and place it somewhere on the tier list and maybe talk about why but it's not gonna be a long video hopefully so first up here we have My Back Is Killing Me Baby. I won't lie, I absolutely love My Back Is Killing Me Baby. I love everything about it. Um, like It's just banger after banger. And there's, there's a reason why when Will did Teens of Style that he took a lot of the songs from this album. And that's because there's just a terrific like line of songs. You know, you've got Drum, which is a great opener. Happy News for Sadness, which is like, it's, it's like a fan favourite. Um, Sunburn Shirt, Stoop Kids, Something to See. I'm just naming the album now, but that's because it, it is like all these songs are just banger after banger. Um, I think towards the end of the album, you you slow down a bit, but I still really appreciate some of these cuts. Um, you know, POW is incredibly underrated. Open Mouth Boy seems to get a bit of hate from fans, but I think it's a really good closer. Um, the only one, oh, and Father Father Flesh in Rags is 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 really underrated like not enough people talk about that and the, and the album gets its name from that song uh, i think the only one i would say i don't care about too much is the song lawns and it's not that i don't care about it it's just i think it would be better suited for an album like um little pieces of paper it seems like an um it seems like a song that should have been cut because if you listen to it once it's fine but you've got to get through it or uh, you know whenever you come back and to be honest, like the song from a uh, little piece of the paper called 100 Mil Minutes of Solitude, I think that would have been a much better fit for this album in place of Lawns. Um, Lawns is fine. I just don't, <laughs> you know, I can take it or leave it, but sometimes I feel it interrupts the flow of the album a, a bit. Um, but as I say, all, all of these songs are absolute bangers. Um, probably my favourites would be Happy News for Sadness, Sunburnt Shirts, Stoop Kid, this version of Something Soon, I think, is probably a little worse than the one that was re-recorded for Teens of Style. Uh, just because you don't get that a cappella second chorus. Um, but mm, I, I would say all the other songs are better in this original version, except for except for possibly Something Soon. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I rank this album so highly. This is one of my favourites. Uh, so next up we've got Four, the fourth numbered album. And Four is kind of a weird one for me. The thing with 4 is, I, when I first listened to it, it blew me away. If you would ask me where I would rank this after my first listen of 4, it'd be, you know, an S tier. But I find the thing with 4 is, it has a bit of a diminishing return effect. Like, I don't find myself coming back to it very often, but when I do, it's, it, you know, it still blows me away. Um, so I guess it just doesn't have a very strong re-listen for me, um, 4. And, but you know, it, there's good songs. A uh, good bridge to never cross is, is a brilliant opener. My only problem with it is it just lasts a little too long, especially towards the end. Uh, and that's a problem I think a lot of Will's songs can have. Um, but a good bridge to never cross, good opener. And then you kind of get these uh, mid songs. Like if we were to talk about the numbered albums as a whole, I think four probably is, is the most mid range of them. Um, in the sense, you know, there's there's not as many lows, but there's there's not as many highs, and that's not to say this is a bad bad album because as as I say, it, it really blew me away the first time I listened. Um, but you know, 
like songs like Who Even Knows and Even the Who Knows. Like they're good songs, but I think you'd be hard pressed to find someone who would list them as the favourite. Uh, Not kidding around is pretty funny though, and uh, Heartless Dick, D- Dickless Heart. You know, you get these sort of mirrored songs, which I guess comes back later in Will's work. Uh, I feel like Daniel Johnston is kind of hard to talk about because it's a fun song, but it's also a bit cringe. But I feel that that was the point. Uh, the Ghost of Bob Saget is 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 brilliant, and Around is probably one of my favourite closers. Like when those trumpets come in at the end, um, it just it seals the album perfectly. So yeah, I don't hate this album. I wish, uh, to be honest, I wish some of these songs appeared on Teens of Style. I know we get the the uh, trumpets in the um, we get the trumpets somewhere. Yeah, in, uh, in in the Teens of Style song that appear in Around, and we get. Uh, the ghost of Bob Saget coming back in Teens of Denial. Um, but there's an album actually on YouTube called 4%, which is a remaster of this album. And if we were talking about 4%, then I would place this so much higher. Because that, that remaster uh, is called 4% and it's on YouTube and it is fantastic. It sounds amazing. It, when I go back to 4, what I find is I, I do like the lo-fi sound but it's a little i don't know it just it just didn't work for me as much as some of the other albums and you know i really like the lo-fi sounds of some of the other albums but i find four very good um as i say don't come back to it too often but when i do it blows me away so am i going a tier i think i'm probably going to go b tier for four next up is the album three and this, if you were to ask any Car Seat Headfest fan, uh, they'd probably tell you that this was the best of the numbered albums. It's certainly the one with uh, the most, like, it's the most of a concept album. You know, we start off with No Starving and end with Oh Starving. So, you know, if your concept album isn't beginning and ending with the same thematic song, then is it really a concept album? And, you know, he brings this back for Teens of Style. You know, that, that album begins with Oh Starving and ends with... Uh, sorry, it begins with No Starving and ends with Oh Starving. Um, my feelings with 3 is... It's got some really, really big highs. And then maybe a few... A few too many lows, I think, for me to really think of it as the best album. But as with... Really, with the majority of these albums, I do enjoy it. It's just if we're going to talk critically, let's talk critically so no starving i think is an, a fantastic opener will always nails his openers um and this is just yeah it's just a reverse sample of oh starving to some drums but it just works it sets you up for the album uh, portrait of the artist is <laughs> a pretty funny song um it gets you i think probably into will's mindset at the time uh then we go to beach week which is one of the beach songs but I, i've got to be honest i've never really cared for beach week too much it's okay a uh, foreign song I quite like. Um, Puss Teenagers Take Off Your Clothes. Again, it's okay. I feel like the drum beats are very... Um, like, uh, uh, what's the phrase? Like, rhythm and bass. and uh, I don't know. It's always kind of stood out as a weird, weird one to me. And it, I kind of find it weird that he re-recorded it as well. And then, you know, this, this is what I'm talking about. Like, we've got Beach Week, Foreign Song... Uh, Puss, Teenagers, and Sun Hot. And I'd say none of those songs really do it for me. Like Summer Bomber, don't really care for it. Uh, but then you get Beach Fags, which is fantastic, one of the best ever. Ryan North by Northwest, which is brilliant. Uh, and then the ending Beach songs, Beach Drugs, Beach Death, and Beach Funeral. I can't say I really care too much for Beach Drugs, uh, but Beach Death and Beach Funeral are really good endings. Um, so really good songs and especially the endings of those songs where will goes all high pitched and is basically just screaming into a mic is fantastic and then oh starving is um you know that that's that's a good good close it matches the beginning so yeah um three is a good album it's the first one i would say that has a concept but it's it's not one like the song the the brilliant songs on that album i do come back to a lot you know portrait beach fags beach funeral the rest i think is pretty mid-tier so i'm gonna i'm gonna place it b four three 
Oh, so yeah, so the T, uh, I'll also say the tiers are ordered as well. So the ones furthest left, the better. So I would say, yeah, it's 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 B tier, um, but four's a little better than three. Okay, next up is two, and I'm sorry to say, I'm just going to get this out of the way, it's A tier. I fucking love two. Two gets the most shit from all the fans. And maybe I'm biased because um, I, when my daughter was born, I was listening to two a lot. So maybe it's just takes me back to a, a good time in my life. But two gets a lot of shit and no one cares about it. I think it's got some of the most fantastic songs out there. It's, it's rough. It's kind of like one, but we'll talk about one in a, in a minute. But one kind of gets a little too experimental. But two, on the other hand... Um, I, th I just think I just I just like the songs, you know. Smoke Zone is such a interesting opener. Um, it's got these really um, sort of off key vocals and scratchy guitar lines, and it kind of just sets the album up. Uh, then you get the second song. This one time I went to the coffee house. That really long title song, which is you know a nice um, nice slow cut. Uh, we're in space is probably one of the weaker ones, but it's okay. You know, maybe it introduces that space theme that we get in How to Leave Town. Um, it's you that you're the asshole that made this, has this really grating um, guitar riff that is just it encompasses what the album is. It's sort of a, I don't want to use the word grating in a, in a bad way. I think it was uh, intentionally done. You know, it's a grating, really rough around the edges project, and that's what I like about it. Um, Shoelace is really catchy. Act Suspicious, you know, I mean, Act Suspicious is so good that Will, Will's recorded it, I think, three, two or three other times. You know, he's done it for Live at WCWM, and he's done it for uh, the Japanese bonus track for Teens of Denial. So, you know, that's how much Will likes this song. And two is actually, I, th I think I read um, something from Will that said uh, he considers two to be his, wor his worst album because it was just a rehash of one, but I really don't see that with two. I see it as its own thing. It maybe shows some similar styles to one, you know, the reverse samples and, and you know, some, some song styles, but for me it's its own thing and it's, it's brilliant. Uh, so yeah, The Majestic Hotel is catchy as hell, 90s catchy as hell. Fiction Eye is a really slow, nice piano ballad. It's kind of hard to make out Will's vocals, but from what you can make out, um, you know, it's, it's, it sounds really heartfelt, and we don't get many of these songs from Will where it's just him and the piano. Um, so, you know, it's quite a rare cut. Hanging out with my more mean women's apparel uh, is is really cool. Uh, but it's got this fantastic bass line towards the end of the song um, when, you know, all the reverse samples kick in um, and, and the bass revs up and it just ends so strong. Uh, and then the last song, then it will be exactly the same as Earth. It's okay. It it never it never blew me away, but it's kind of connected to Pain Star, which appears on Disjected Membra, and that song itself is connected to Twin Fantasy. So if if you are one of the Twin Fantasy lovers, um, then this 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 final song on two, you know, it sort of has a thematic connection. It's it's a callback. So yeah, I love two. Next up, Little Pieces of Paper. So I'm going to have to think about Little Pieces of Paper. Because I I love it. <laughs> you know, it's it's a B-Sides album. So it's made up of songs that, you know, um, he didn't feel were suitable for any of the numbered albums. So Little Pieces of Paper with no written on them, I think is slightly better than two. Do I? Do I think it's slightly better than two? Yes. Yes, I do. It was a really hard listen for me at first. You know, first time I listened to this, I thought, oh God, this this is F-tier stuff. This is not a good album. But then, you know, you re-listen and you re-listen and the songs get in your head and you realise that for a B-sides project, there are some really golden songs here. Um, Leave Together is... Like, this album's comprised of different projects from Will at the time. So one of those projects was something called Stabby Ode, which was 
um, a project to take uh, songs from the Beatles Abbey Road and sort of reverse the samples and build songs around those reverse samples. Um, he's also just got some songs that were uh, taken off of um, they were taken off of uh, a, a cold album called Five and also an, a cold EP called Sunburnt Shirts. Um, so songs songs that he didn't want on those two albums came here and the songs that he did want from those two albums became My Back Is Killing Me Baby. And you can certainly see that Will picked for the most part the correct songs to appear on My Back Is Killing Me Baby. Um, and for the most part he picked the correct songs to appear on Little Pieces of Paper with no written on them. Um, so Leave Together, I Don't Want You, I Am Afraid of Literally Everything are you know, good songs. 100 Minutes of Solitude is something that definitely should have been on My Back Is Killing Me Baby in place of Lawns. You know, Lawns should have, this is where Lawns should be. Lawns belongs on Little Pieces of Paper. Not that there's anything wrong with Lawns, but it just belongs here. Um, Neon Signs, it's one of the more cringy songs in a way. You definitely get the sense it was recorded when Will was a bit younger and I'm not sure what it's really about, but it also does seem to be a prequel to How to Leave Town in a way, <laughs> so it, you know, pick your poison. Uh, Samson's Golden Axe, often regarded as Will's worst song, it probably is one of the worst ones. Um, I think Ice Cream Social's a little worse than, uh, Samson's Golden Axe. But then you get into a really good line, you get, uh, Whack Over Your Receipts, which is catchy and comes back into Infantasy. The single song, which is, uh, really good. Get Better, Get Well, maybe goes on a little too long, but it's good. Squid Dessert is probably the best one. No, it's second best one from the Stabby Old Project. I would say Nothing is probably the best one from the Stabby Old Project. Uh, FF, which is, um, uh, is that the demo? It's either the demo or re-record of the song that appears on 2. Um, Surf Jerk, uh, which was taken from 5. Pleasant Sort of Terror. You just get these really great songs coming you know, mid to late in this album. Uh, Total Burn's a, a bit of a miss. Uh, when I'm Here's Good. The Staying Song's Good. Of course, I Can Talk With My Eyes Shut is a fan favourite and, and people believe it should be on 5. For me, personally, it, it, it belongs on this album. And I feel would have given five too much of a concept to put it on there. I think five. Uh, sorry, uh, my back is killing me, baby. I think my back is killing me, baby works better uh, as an album without a theme behind it. You know, like we get with Twin Fantasy or three, or really any of the later ones. Um, so to to put that song on there maybe would have been out of place. And I sort of agree that it was taken from five. Uh, Vice President of Google, I, I never hear anyone talk about this, and I think it's really catchy and really good. Uh, and and the bonus track, Hot Sun, is yeah, pretty nothing. Um, but, you know, if you look away from this song, as uh, from this album as a collection of songs, and you look at, it, look at it as a whole, I just really enjoy it. I think it's a really cool project. I think it's got great re-listenability. And it's not something you need to listen to in order. So you can pick your favourite. So you could listen to it random or, you know, whatever. So it's just, I just enjoy it. I think it's, I think it's right where it is. It's, it's A tier stuff. Better than two. Um, probably wouldn't put it any higher. Uh, but enjoyable as hell. So next up, we have the album One. The first album released by Car Seat Headrest. And I think, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> what do I think? I think it's probably. Mm. Mm. <laughs> uh, is it better than three? Is it? Let me think. It's probably not better than three. It's probably a little worse than three. It's probably the worst of the numbered albums. Um, and that's not again nothing to say. Not to say anything bad about it, um, like uh, the the early album is really quite good, even with the weird reverse samples and everything. I think the final stretch of the album, when you get into songs like "Yes Bulletin," "Mortgages for Veterans," "My Dad Just Passed Out," these really take the experimental uh, sound of Will at the time a bit too far. I find them unenjoyable. 
you know, within the album, the they make sense, but I, I, you know, would you ever find anyone that would say, oh, I really like that song, Yes Bulletin from One by Carsey Headrest? I don't think so. It's, uh, it's there to fluff up the album, make it a bit longer, but it's pretty nothing. But great songs um, in, in the form of uh, Tibby Island Horse Ghost, which is the, the first song. Good Sundays, okay. This version of Big Jacket is probably the worst version we've got, uh, just because it's really distorted and seems to be played on a cassette player. Um, but it's okay, you know, it's, it's, it's fine. Uh, Caesar the <laughs> Somnambulist is weird. He's kind of got this uh, voice that just keeps saying, Plastic. 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 And it's uh, pretty strange. Happy Ugly, not one of my favourites. David Lynch vs. The Moon, again, not one of my favourites. Uh, His Shiny Custom is weirdly one of my favourites from the album, even though it's just basically a guitar line and Will listing his friends. Um, Up All Night, yep, yeah, one of the best. Uh, Inside the Bell Jar, often cited as one of the worst songs. I think it's okay, but I, I wouldn't defend it very strongly. Uh, July New Hay is pretty bad. Kid War is uh, a banger, absolute banger. Uh, that that guitar lick is uh, it's really cool, and when Will starts screaming at the end, it's just very emotional in a way. And You Have to Go to College is definitely out of place on this album. You Have to Go to College belongs on little pieces of paper, right? It, sh- it should have been, it shouldn't have been on this album. It, it doesn't fit in with the theme. It doesn't fit in following Kid War. It's just kind of. It's something that should have followed Ice Cream Social from uh, Little Pieces of Paper. But oh well. And as I say, the final um, the final line of tracks are pretty bad. But what does OUJ stand for? Oh, the final track is one of the best Will has ever done. I know we, we it comes back in Teens of Denial. Um, but for this al- uh, for this this version, this what does OUJ stand for? Absolutely fantastic. I've never had a reversed vocal sample stuck in my head <laughs> like this song gives me. Um yeah brilliant brilliant so as a whole one is yeah definitely the worst of the numbers album numbered albums um not one i found easy to get into but i come back to it and it's got some okay songs and when i'm in the mood yeah i do give it a total listen but that's not very often so next up nervous young man the 2013 album nervous young man the what is it two hours long two hours of music and also released alongside disject to membra to um to give us like three four hours of music all at once nervous young man is (laughs) brilliant it's full of brilliant songs it's full of interesting ideas it doesn't um rely on a theme too much i mean it does it does have a theme and it's about you know being uh, a young you know a nervous young man it's about growing up and uh and having problems you know it's 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 about will's state of mind at the time but it's and what i'm saying is it's not hindered by um trying to stick to a concept too much this is really just a collection of songs that will has written you know at the time uh, I think on on the band camp it says between the ages of you know seventeen and twenty one or something. I think it's brilliant. I think it's hindered by its length. The thing is, two hours long. It does not invite you to to listen to it all the way through, especially with the track order. Um, some of these should have probably been in this to Membra. So, for example, like Boxing Day is oh that's a really hard song for me to um place because i think the first half of boxing day you know before we get to the whole acoustic part um so i guess the first third is is uh it's, it's brilliant i think it's a fantastic opener with that guitar line you know like ding, 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 that fantastic opener and then it drags and then it keeps on dragging and then you kind of get it back but then it goes back to dragging and it's about seven minutes too long and this is what i'm saying this is a problem will has sometimes um but i know that's um 
terrible. Some some fans would hate me saying that because Boxing Day is you know a fan favorite. I don't care for it too much. I think it's a, got a good start, but I find it hard to listen past the five minute mark on Boxing Day. I'm sorry. Uh, we can't afford your depression anymore. Is uh, it's it's one I wouldn't ever you know uh, say is a great song, but it's one I would I'd love that is on the album. It definitely fits into it. Uh, don't remind me, Holmes and Afterglow. You kind of have this line of pretty standard rock songs that are good. Uh, I think Afterglow is probably my favourite of them. Uh, don't remind me kind of has a Christmas theme going, um, which I think How to Leave Town also does. Uh, Jerks is hated, but I think it's okay. I'm not a fan. I'm not the biggest fan of the chorus, um, but the verses are pretty good. Uh, but then we get to broke. Then we get this long line of brilliant songs the thing with nervous young man is uh, so, some people are divided some people say the first half of that album is the better half and the second half is filler i i think it's the other way i think the first half is mainly filler and the second half is mainly brilliant so broken birds uh, absolutely fantastic the backing vocals from will in the chorus of broken birds are brilliant um uh, probably goes on again about three minutes too long, but that's okay. Uh, the gun song is Will's lyr lyrical peak. If you if you read the lyrics of the gun song, it's absolutely brilliant all the way through. Every lyric, every single word, is beautifully crafted. Uh, the song itself, it's a long one, but unlike Boxing Day, this one keeps my attention because of how um, how, how how strong the lyrics are. Goodbye, love. To be honest, never really cared for it. Uh, I can play the piano is the musical heart of this album. This is what this album's about, um, and the the outro to the to I can play the piano is is fantastic. Crows resting in bigger pieces is pretty funny and I enjoy it. I want to sweat is pretty funny and I enjoy it. Burning Man criminally underrated. Uh, I lo I love Burning Man, especially those synths and especially that keyboard bit that starts on the second verse. Absolutely love it and it's got such a strong chorus. Dreams Fall Hard, yeah, fantastic ballad. Um, not sure how I feel about the piano bit at the end. I guess it's, I guess it's fine. I just wouldn't have put it on this one. I would have let it just be the ballad it, it is. Uh, playing Crash Blues, yeah, pretty okay. I enjoy playing Crash Blues. I'm not sure what Will's um, obsession is with having songs connected because the actual song is called Playing Crash Blues, I Can't Play the Piano. Uh, is it I Can't Play the Piano Anymore? I'm not sure. Uh, you just get that a lot with Will. You get um, he 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 likes his set, he likes his brackets. He likes his song titles to have brackets in them, and that's okay. And we get the best version of Big Jacket available out there on this album, uh, which is uh, yeah, the Nervous Young Man Big Jacket is fantastic, fantastic build, fantastic subtle keyboard in the background. It's great. Def at the movies is criminally underrated. Uh, Just Tired is criminally underrated. Will's vocals at the end of Just Tired are the best they've ever been. In fact, I'll say that as uh, uh, generally, that Will's vocals, so, you know, they sort of go up and up and down across his uh, discography. But I would say his Nervous Young Man era, like this album, has the strongest vocals from Will. He's not quite reached his later grumbly, moany phase, but he's, he's out of his... Um, his untrained uh, teenagey phase. <laughs> so yeah, nervous young man. Strongest vocals from Will, and as I'm said, as I said, just tired. The ending of just tired has the best vocals from Will. I think in probably any of his songs. I, I, I think it's fantastic. And then then we get some strange angel, which is nice, and knife in the coffee, which is uh, a fantastic closer. Really good lyrics to knife in the coffee. So nervous young man. Where do I place it? I think it's A tier, and I think it's it's better than Little Pieces of Paper. Do I think it's S tier? No, no. As I say, it's hindered a little bit by its length and uh, some some of the less enjoyable songs. For example, you know, uh, don't really care too much about Holmes. I probably would have taken Jerks off. Don't really care about Goodbye Love. Hmm. The rest are pretty solid. Some strange angels okay, but it's just that just that little extra that I think uh, puts it away from me putting it in S tier. But that's okay. 
Next up is Monomania. Uh, Monomania is probably the album that took me the longest time to get into, um, to, uh, to understand. Uh, it's a sequel to, in a lot of ways, to Twin Fantasy 2011. And it's, it just wasn't one I enjoyed. I would have ranked it probably E or D tier for the first few years of being a, a car seat headrest fan. Uh, but it has, in, in, in probably the last year, grown on me an incredible amount. And I really respect it as as a sequel to Twin Fantasy and also as its own work. Ah, I'm trying to think about it. I, I guess what put me off is the songs. I just kind of just, just did... There's nine songs in this album and I just kind of didn't think they were particularly good songs from Will. There were there were some okay ones, but a lot of them seemed to just not not hit me in that way. Um, and I think I was trying to listen to them as individual songs too much, when in fact it's an album, it's a concept album, it's an album as a whole and it should be listened to um, with that in mind. So Romantic Theory I think is a really good intro. My only problem with it with it is I think it deserves some more lyrics you know most of most of the song like I would say 75% 80% of the song is Will saying la 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 you know he's doing that that part and um, that's catchy I just wish we could have had a verse or two extra like we get in uh, in the song this is based on what was it called uh, Rebel Nation um, you know I wish we had a few more verses of lyrics that we could enjoy uh, and then we get to misheard lyrics, which is uh, very underrated by fans, I think. Probably, probably not. I think fans know how good it is. Um, but misheard lyrics, I guess I don't hear people talk about. And I think it's really catchy and really good. Uh, Times to Die is, God, it's, it's one. Times to Die is a song I never really took a lot of love to. Um, it's okay. It it goes on a bit long. It isn't the catchiest. That chorus is a bit. It's a bit like the jerks chorus. I'm afraid I, I, I'm not really into the chorus of "Times to Die." It's just a bit flat for me. Uh, but the verses are really good on "Times to Die," and I think I think the instrumentation is great. Um, it's just that it's just that chorus mainly, and and the ending, which I think goes on a little long. Um, I certainly want to brought "Times to Die" back for "Teens of Style." Uh, but it's okay. Overexposed and Joy is a good one. Uh, Los Bar Baracos is probably the song that took me the longest time to understand. I just I just didn't get Los Baracos. Um, I didn't get why it was in Spanish. I didn't get <laughs> I didn't get the song, the structure. I didn't, just didn't understand it. In recent times, I sort of um, have grown more fond to it, especially um, especially towards the ending um, and those synths at the beginning. Then we have Souls, which is fantastic. Souls is a brilliant song with a lot of uh, slow build. Um, and when we get to Will at the end screaming, and uh, it's just fantastic. Maud Gone, uh, well loved, good synths. Um, brilliant when that uh, guitar line comes in at the end and then we get the, um, the sax solo. <laughs> You know, that's good. Sleeping with Strangers, probably my favourite one from the album and one of my favourite car seat headrest songs, full stop. Sleeping with Strangers has this amazing um, drum beat that I think was uh, uh, alluded to in uh, Pissed, I can't pronounce it, Pissed Teenagers, Please Take Off Your Clothes in uh, 3. Um, it's got this, yeah, great uh, drum beat going on. Uh, really really building the chorus up every time it's repeated so you know the first time it's just playing second time we've got the uh, synths and guitars in the background third time we've got you know the backing vocals with it and then just a really strong finish Anchorite love you very much uh, yeah uh, hard hard to really nail down because it's a long song and a lot of it isn't really with anything you know like the song's kind of over within the first three and a half minutes and then the rest of the song is a bit a bit padded i think it goes on a little too long but i also think it's needed and it's a nice cathartic ending to the album um so monomania uh, i'd be it'd be difficult to call it one of my favorites but i've grown to respect it more 
No. What do I think? Is it better than one? Yes. Is it better than three? Yes. Is it better than four? Yes. Is it better than two? Probably. Is it better than a little piece of paper? Yes, just about. Is it better than Nervous Young Man? No, not really. Yes, I'm happy with that order. I, th I, th I think that's fair. I think it's fair. It is one of the stronger ones. But it's only as of late that I'm sort of appreciating it. So maybe maybe in a few years it'll it'll move up. Right, Living While Starving. That's an e EP, or possibly called Starving While Living. It's really not clear. Um, comprised of five songs, released just after Monomania. So Starving While Living, I think, is full of bangers. Like, from start to finish, with maybe one exception, it's full of really great songs. It's Only Sex. <laughs> it's funny. I think Will kind of regrets writing It's Only Sex, from what I've seen him talk about. Um, but It's Only Sex is, is pretty pretty funny and you know tongue-in-cheek and catchy also then we get reuse the cells which i think you're either gonna love or hate that guitar line and no that's wrong because i kind of love and hate it at the same time <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good good guitar line good little riff but it's also kind of got a weird um treble tone to it which i'm not sure i'm not sure about like, half the time I love it, half the time I hate it. Um, but the actual song itself, especially the chorus, is brilliant. Uh, I, I Hate Living, uh, another one with a really good chorus. Like, probably I Hate Living gets stuck in my head the most from this album. Um, Devil Moon, a uh, bit of a slowdown, bit of a, a chill out while Will harmonises with himself and, uh, and a keyboard. Which is fine, because it'd be weird to go from I Hate Living to the re-record of Oh Starving so soon. You know, we need that chill down with the Devil Moon. And it's okay. It doesn't blow me away. It doesn't really do anything. But it doesn't last long. I think, And I think it's needed for the structure of the album. So Devil Moon, a lot of people are a bit iffy on it. And I, I agree, I don't think it's fantastic. But I also don't hate it. Uh, and the re-record of Oh Starving, which is different, but um, in a good way. I think the problem with Oh Starving, if I had one from 3, uh, is that Will sounds so young on it. The Oh Starving version from uh, the album 3. Will just sounds like, um, sounds like he's 12, honestly. Uh, this one adds a bit more, you know, he's got a bit more bass to his voice. He... Uh, he changes it up a little, so it's not really got those piano chords going um, on the beat. It's kind of synth uh, synthesized, which you know fits into the theme of this album, I suppose, uh, because it's more of a synth album. Uh, but I think the song needs those piano chords, and that's what they bring back for uh, uh, Teens of Style. So this is a good version. I'm just glad we don't lose the other version. So, Starving While Living, what do I think? I think it's definitely A tier. And I think it is... This is the problem. You've got to think of it as a whole. So I'm not thinking of it like, oh, it's only got five songs, so it's worse than Nervous Young Man. I'm thinking of it as a whole. As a whole album, how much do I enjoy this release? Um, and I think it is better than Monomania. I think it is better than Nervous Young Man. And that's as far as I'm going with it. Yes, I think that's fair. As, a, as, as an album, not as the number of songs. As an album, I think it's better than Nervous Young Man. Next up, we're nearly there. Next up is How to Leave Town. Uh, probably the fan favourite. Well, you know, with the exception of maybe Twin Fantasy. This is probably the fan favourite of the Bandcamp releases. The pre-Matador releases. It was actually the first Car Seat Headrest album I listened to. Um, I really liked the first track. And then I didn't really enjoy the rest too much. Uh, that was when I first listened to it. Uh, now on re-listens, it's grown on me a bit more. But it's not one I think is my favourite. And if I was to say anything about it, I would say it's probably overrated a little bit by fans. Maybe quite a moderate bit. Um, it's got some good songs. The ending of Dramamine is, has a really catchy verse, uh, 
you know, verse and chorus. My only problem with the ending of Dramamine is literally the ending of the ending of Dramamine. Like, I don't mind the intro. The intro is fine. I love that build-up with the drums and the synth, and then it goes into the song five minutes in. That's fine. It's the ending of this song that I think drags on and is grating on the ears and goes on a little too long. But maybe that's the point. Maybe it was a reference to its own title. Uh, Beast Monster Thing is actually, yeah, that's really good now. Um, didn't really care for it back in the day. Now I think it's a really good song. Uh, Kimochi Waru, or however you pronounce it, the song called When, 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 is something that, yeah, yeah, that's grown on me too. And I think Will's harmonies towards the end of the song are brilliant, especially when he gets to you know, uh, one of the final lines of the song. Uh, so what's that line? <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking through my phone. Uh, what's, the, what's the line? Um... And I'm torn between trying to be a better man and trying to accept the man that I am. When Will gets to that line, um, he has like three harmonies going on at once. He has like a bass and a mid and a and a, and a high one. <laughs> it's uh, fantastic. It just really hits hits hard. You get the instrumental I ninety four W, which I think aside from David Lynch versus the Moon is is one of the only um, instrumentals Will's done, and it's fine. I'm not really sure what it's doing here, but it's fine. Uh, You're in love with me. It's got such a boring intro. It's kind of like the Vincent intro in Teens of Denial. It goes on and it goes on a little too long. Um, the actual song itself is good. I just wish we'd have taken a bit of that intro down. I don't really care for it. America Never Been is the best from the album. America Never Been is absolutely fantastic from start to finish. Catchy as hell. I'm glad Will changed it up from the uh, older release of this album and added that acoustic intro because I feel it works better and fits in with the space theme a little more. Um, yeah, be best on the album. Love the harmonies that go on later. Love everything about it. Um, second best is probably the next song. I want you to know that um, I'm asleep or I hope that you're awake. Um, really, really deep lyrics from Will and uh, great verses. And, and towards the end when he's... Um, when he's doing, you know, not like this, not like this. Uh, sorry, not like them, not like them part is uh, is, re is a really strong build-up too. Um, is this space dust really from the Titanic? It's okay, I just don't know what it's doing here. You know, what's this album about? Is this album about alienation? Yes. Um, is it about feeling alone? Yeah, I would say it is. So I'm not really sure what this... I, I know this album was kind of written around the time that Will was touring away from his hometown and I guess feeling uh, a bit isolated from his roots I suppose and in unfamiliar places and this this song is about that it's, a, it's about driving around with artist friends um, I just I just find the placement weird um, like why is it second to last I'm just not sure about it I, I like the song itself Uh, is uh, so is the space dust really from the Titanic? Hey, space cat cadet is a favorite fan favorite. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good one. It's 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 a good song. Maybe again, so it goes on slightly too long. <laughs> um, but uh, no, no, no. I wouldn't say it goes on slightly too long. Sorry, I'm I'm chatting rubbish there. It's a long song, but I think it goes on for as long as it needs to. Um, yeah, good good. Uh, good harmonies towards the end and I'm, I'm just trying to think how it goes <laughs> sorry <laughs> good harmonies towards the end uh, with the hey space good especially when that gi um, guitar riff comes back uh, not comes back when that guitar riff is introduced towards the end so how to leave time what do I think about it I think it's a bit overrated I'm sorry I also think it's good but how good do I think it is well I mean, this album is made up of songs that Will didn't feel were appropriate for his first uh, major release. So this album is, you know, it's by definition made up of songs that uh, are subpar. Or I guess maybe just didn't fit into the theme of, of, of a first release. I'm gonna place it... Is it better than one? Yes. Is it better than three? Yes. Is it better than four? No, <laughs> I don't think so. I think it. I think it'll fit nice and snug here. 
no issues with the album uh it's just not one i find myself coming back to a lot even though i know it's a fan favorite i get it the next up is the album teens of style made up of songs from my back is killing me baby and uh monomania right so this was a re-record it was intended to be an introduction to the album for new listeners and also a chance for will to re-record some of his older stuff uh, in in more high definition, I suppose, even though this is a lo-fi album. It's kind of a different lo-fi than we, we have in those albums. It's lo-fi through an aesthetic choice rather than a technical limitation. And I think it is good. I think, like, as an album, it's probably the perfect introduction you could ask for to Car Seat Headrest. You know, you don't um, you don't have to put up with the abrasive uh, low fineness of the earlier stuff, but you also don't have the kind of change of style that you get with the later stuff. So, if I was to recommend an album for someone to get into this band with, it would be Teens of Style because uh, I think it's I think it's designed to be that introduction. Um, are the songs better than the initial release? Well, let's go through them. Sunburnt shirts. No, I like the My Back Is Killing Me Baby version more for certain burnt shirts. The drum? Yes, yes, this version is better uh, a little bit because of the boosted bass. Uh, they're pretty much the same, but yeah, the boosted bass lends itself to the, this version. Uh, Something Soon? Yes, the Teens of Style version is better for uh, Something Soon. And it's mainly down to that second uh, chorus with the acapella. Uh, no Passion? Mm, kind of kind of a tie kind of a tie i like both versions uh times to die i would say monomania has the better times to die uh pissed pissed teenagers take off your clothes from free from three is hard to say i, th I think the version on three is a little too lo-fi for me a little too rough so i i would say this version is better strangers kind of a tie again M mod gone kind of a tie again <laughs> lost barachos um i would say probably this version's a little more interesting but it's kind of a toss-up um i know starving uh this is probably the best version of all starving from all three albums that it appears on uh, and then we also get bad role models old idols exhumed or pissed teenagers put your clothes back off and that is a new song for this album and i think it's pretty interesting i think it relates to people um kind of looking through his earlier work and forming judgments about his relationships with people i think that's what this song's about and maybe the album as a whole um and it's a good it's a good little intro it's a it's a good little um uh, original song for this album and it brings back the drums as i said earlier from around from four so that's cool um do I think there should have been more songs in this album? Well, not more songs, but different songs. Yeah, I mean, I would have loved to see some uh, re-recorded songs from 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. Songs like, um, oh no, Around. Around would have been a brilliant song to re-record. Or uh, Father Flashing Rags. That would have been absolutely fantastic in, in more high definition. Um, but Because uh, the songs that are on this album, the, there is good songs, but they were already as good songs <laughs> like you know they already existed so maybe we should have taken some of the worst songs and and done them better I, I don't know i don't know as i say this this album works perfectly as an introduction to the band and it's one that i come back to a lot um so i would say i think i think it's i think it's a good album i think i think it's a good album i think it's definitely a tier and I think it's probably better than uh, than the rest of these. Yeah, it's it's is it S? Is it S tier? Oh, no, it's not. It's A tier. It's A tier. It's 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 a good album. It's a good album. Next up is Disjecta Membro. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get it out of the way. I think it's D. <laughs> I know we're skipping the C entirely. I know people love Disjecta Membro. It's it's not got that many great songs for me it's okay <laughs> i wish i liked it more because people rave about this people talk about this album like it's it's full of hidden gems and i just don't see it 
I try. I try and get into it. I just think the songs are subpar. Like I can see why these songs aren't on Nervous Young Man. And I'm gr- I'm grateful that they exist, and I'm grateful that they w- they're on this album. But I can't say I return to it very often. Um, End Peace is fine. Please, Mr. Pilot is fine. This is my problem with the album. All the songs are fine. Well, a lot of the songs are fine, but that's all they are. And I don't really. There's other songs up here that I would rather listen to than return for this fine so- this fine album. Uh, Two twenty four is fine. The hard part is fine. Same man, low fidelity is poor. Napoleon march into Russia. That's that's a good one. I like. I enjoy that. Drunks on a work nice is hilarious. You know, ten out of ten for that song. Uh, Love me too much is 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 actually a really good cut. I enjoy Love me too much, uh, especially Will's like sixties harmonies, fifties sixties harmonies going on in the background. Uh, Dream encounter on Smoke Mountain is probably my least favorite car seat headrest song ever written. It's trash. It's throw it away, get it gone. I can't, this was actually going to appear on Nervous Young Man at one point. It is rubbish. Get it gone. Uh, Sinner is is good. That's a good song actually. Um, really depressing sounding bass going on, but it's a good song. When Will Man Land Come is okay. High Life is so forgettable. Like even if you're the biggest car seat headrest fan, like, I dare you now to try and say Hum High Life. You know. Um, like, what do you think High Life sounds like? Because you've got it wrong. Uh, AC is okay. If not, then Oh Well is is brilliant, but goes on too long. Uh, the Memories Leonard Cohen cover is fantastic. I re-listen to that all the time. He really he really does a good job on that. Uh, KS is, is is good. I know it's related to Twin Fantasy, as is the next song, Unfinished Pain Star. Um, and I think was the hard part as well. Uh, the hard part I think was originally going to be sober to death. Um, KS is okay. It's good. It's got a good build up. Unfinished Pain Star is fine. Um, I think I prefer the version that appears in in face to face, but it's okay here. So yeah, I'm sorry. It's D tier. It's it's fine. But that's my problem with it. It's just okay. I, I never I never come back to this album. I come back to this album for one one or two songs, but never often. And I really have tried to get into it, and I, I don't care. I just don't care. So we're coming up for our first Twin Fantasy here, and um, as I said earlier, the dogs, the, for Mirror to Mirror, the dogs are meant to be reversed, and face to face, they're meant to be in the right order. So I'm just going to assume this is Mirror to Mirror, um, and I'm going to be a total standard fan and say, yes, Mirror to Mirror is S tier. It's the best album of the entire lot. It is fantastic in every single way. I have never listened to an album that has made me feel what this album makes me feel. Uh, this is my favourite album of all time. Um, the 2011 Twin Fantasy. Um, it's it's like, I've heard it been described as like lightning in a bottle. It's a once in a lifetime possible moment to capture this experience, this uh, these feelings, and to put it in such a way that is so relatable, so understandable. It's brilliant, and when I first listened to this, I just didn't get it. Like, I, um, as I said, How to Leave Town was my first album, and then I downloaded this one because I think I saw the cover art about, and I just didn't get it. Like, the songs were weird and long, and and uh, really distorted, and all over the place, and it just wasn't. It just wasn't an album that I understood, so I kind of put it away. Uh, but then I started returning to it, I started getting more into the songs, understanding the structure a little more, and seeing what Will was trying to do here, and, and what he was doing, you know, is is, is amazing, it's, it's just so captures that time, that time in his life, it's so incredible, like My Boy Twin Fantasy, great opener, very simple with the lyrics, um, but each, each verse just building more and more. Beach Life in Death, um, it's like a three-part song, uh, three-part song, uh, some fantastic lyrics, some fantastic vocals from Will, um, Stop Smoking, the, this, on, I, this is re-recorded later for uh, Face to Face, um, but this is this is the better version of Stop Smoking, I think I'll compare the albums when I talk about Face to Face, uh, this is the better version of Stop Smoking though, um, because it's, it's meant to be a lo-fi song, um, Sober to Death, 
fant- I, I'm just going to be saying all these songs are fantastic. I think Nervous Young Inhumans is probably my least favourite from the album. Um, it's fine. And I love that monologue on this version. The monologue from uh, Nervous Young, Young Inhumans on this version fit, fits the theme of the album so much. This album, this album is about codependency. It's about... It's, it's about being so romantically invested in your partner that you are one person it's about seeing it's about wishing your partner was you and it's about as will talks about in the gun song about hating yourself for that and it's about it's about loss of that love as well and it's about the return to you being one person you know it's a twin fantasy the fantasy will end you are not twins you're not conjoined twins you are one person and the other person is not connected to you um and as I say, this album just uh, just takes that concept and nails it. Every song, every line is fantastic in this thing. Um, Bodies is the best from the album, and it's it with like its build up chorus, um, like it's like a merger of cor- choruses. Uh, cute thing, brilliant. High to death, criminally underrated. I really like the old outro that Will had before he uh, he cut it off at the end, where the synths come in. But I love, also love the callback to Stop Smoking. Uh, Famous Prophet's Minds, probably the one that took me the longest time to really get. But once I did, fantastic. And the close of Twin Fantasy is, you know, brilliant. It's what, it's what we need. This album, it gets criticised a lot, especially by a lot of newer fans who listen to Face to Face first as, as a, you know, too too abrasive, too, too noisy on the ears, too... Um, just too lo-fi and i don't see it that way yes it's lo-fi because of technical limitations but that gives it it's incredible energy uh it's fantastic twin fantasy 2011 is the best album ever recorded and he did it when he was 19 and (laughs) i love it okay we need to move on because i would just i would just be raving about twin fantasy forever um next up is teens of denial so, Teens of Denial is a good album. It's kind of a departure of the lo-fi style. This is the first high-definition album. You know, I guess you could call Teens of Denial high-definition, but it's in a lo-fi style. This one is the first one in a, a high-definition style. And it is really enjoyable. Just, like, it's enjoyable mainly because just of the song writing on this album... Like, there's some fantastic music on this album. Um, there's also some some more boring tracks, but not many. In fact, I would only say Vincent is the only track I feel isn't brilliant. And it's okay. It's just, okay, it's that, like with um, You're In Love With Me, uh, Vincent just has this really long intro that I feel goes on too long. And then when we get to the song itself, it's not, it doesn't blow me away. It's just okay. And I feel like if we hadn't, had that intro i could have just moved past it but vincent's always a little roadblock that comes after fill in the blank for me which um mm, it puts me off a bit but that's really the only one from the album i don't care for too much uh destroyed by hippie power is fantastic joe gets kicked out of school for using drugs with friends but says this isn't a problem is one of my favorites from the album not what i needed great drunk drive is great 1937 state park great unforgiving girl great <laughs> Despite the lyrics, uh, they're still great. Cosmic Hero, Ballad of Costa Co- Concordia, Connect the Dots. Uh, Connect the Dots is probably my favourite from the album. I think it's uh, fantastic and hits that theme. Home, Joe Goes to School is a bit of a boring ending. I won't lie. And um, giving it the uh, Ghost of Bob Saget um, uh, guitar line. It's a bit of a weird choice, if I'm honest. It's kind of like Will ran out of ideas last minute. Or the band, I suppose, at this point. Um, So, yeah. So, Teens of Denial has this heavier guitar, which just works. It's so crunchy. It's so enjoyable to listen to. Um, I guess people... I mean, I imagine people were probably worried at the time how Will's music would translate into into hi-fi and i think it translate translates brilliant brilliantly because uh, these songs are 
these songs are just fantastic. That, that's that's what makes this album so good. The songwriting, not any gimmicks, not any themes. Even though it it does have a theme definitely, but um, it's it's the songwriting. They're just brilliant songs. So I think it's definitely. Is it S tier? Is it S tier? Is such an interesting question. It's one hundred percent definitely at least A tier. Let me think about the songs we've got. Fill in the blank. Such a good intro. Bit of a roadblock with Vincent. Destroyed by hippie ta by hippie powers. It's A tier. It's A tier, but it's the best of A tier. <laughs> okay. Is it better than Teens of Style? Yes, it, it is. The songs are better. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay. Controversial one. Um, Making a door less open. This is the first new album I ever listened to from the band. I think, no, commit yourself completely. Oh yeah, that's another one that's not not on this um, this list. Commit yourself completely, which is a live album, so I can't think of where I put that. I'll, I'll try and place it at the end. Um, Making a door less open is the first new one I listened to. What do I think of it? Making a door less open is not my kind of music. I really wanted to enjoy it. I was so excited to um, await for this album because I was I was going to be part of the new release from the band um, and when I first listened to it I was so disappointed and it's completely fine that the band is moving away from their old sound or at least you know experimenting with new sounds that's fine I want them to I want them to go and make the music that they want to do and yes it would be boring if they just released the same stuff over and over again um, but also, as as a listener, I have a preference, and it, this just isn't my style of music. It's not the music I enjoy. Um, like it's fine. I would never listen to this casually ever. I've tried on a few occasions to give this album a go again because, as I said, Monomania took a while for me to get into. How to Leave Town took a, a while for me to appreciate. You know. Two took a little while. Little piece of the paper took a little while, but every chance I've, I've tried to give this album, I just don't get it. I don't understand these songs as good. You know, way like they're so unmemorable for me. I, I can't. I'm not even a hundred percent sure which ones I'm talking about here. Weightlifters, I quite enjoyed. Um, catchy. Oh yeah, that's that's the big problem with this album actually. Um, for me. Is Will's Will's voice is so it sounds so bored all the time. Will sort of after Teens of Denial, and I think partly during Teens of Denial, but after Teens of Denial, Will sort of adopted this really low, grumbly, almost bored voice um, for a lot of his his music, and it's not one I'm particularly fond of. Uh, I think it works sometimes. I think it comes across as a little put on other times like he's trying to imitate another artist and i wish will would just be himself like he was a nervous young man when he had the best vocal range uh weightlifter can't cool me down i thought was boring on first listen it's actually one i enjoy now uh, you know um yeah i'll come back to can't cool me down that's a good song uh, deadlines hostile i probably couldn't even tell you what song that was because it's so memorable um, Hollywood is uh, bad. Him remix could be a song. Martin's good. I enjoy Martin. It just doesn't go on long enough. Um, like, but I mean, I suppose that's a sign of a good song if you if it leaves you wanting more. Uh, like, it's catchy as hell. Uh, Deadlines thoughtful. Couldn't tell you what song that was. What's with you lately is the one I think the bassist sang, and it's boring. Life Worth Missing is boring. <laughs> there must be more than blood is okay. Famous is actually one of my favourite songs. I think it's got a really interesting um, remix behind it and stuff. Um, not remix, but like, you know, instrumentation. 
um, famous I enjoy, and I think that, that gets slagged off quite a bit. So I, f I find that weird that I enjoy the uh, the lesser liked one. And I appreciate how the different releases, like if you buy this on vinyl, if you buy it digital, if you buy it CD, you'll get slightly different versions. I appreciate that. It's not enough for me. I just don't like the album. I'm so sorry. It's E. It's it's not a good album. I want to like it. I don't. I find it. I find it boring and boring with bad songs. I suppose is the best way to say it. Okay. But I'm glad the band made it. I'm glad the band is doing what they want to do. It's just as a listener, it's not for me. Anyway, final one. Twin Fantasy, the re-record in 2018, called uh, Face to Face. <sighs> I think it's really hard to actually listen, like, to talk about this album without having to compare it to the 2011 version. Um, this came after Teens of Denial, so it was done in a in a high fidelity style, right? Uh, for the most part, what do I think of? Face to face. I think it's a really good re-record, and I think it's so interesting to have an album be re-recorded uh, from a different perspective, especially a concept album like this, where it's not just it's not just a re-record; it's a reimagining, it's a retelling of the story from a fresh perspective, um, with with changes to the songs. And what do I think of these changes? Well, for the most part, the um, the reductions of the originals they, they make the songs worse um uh, now let me say i love the instrumentation i love the high fidelity for most of this um i i don't think twin fantasy necessarily has to be a lo-fi album for it to work but, uh, this album proves like the instrumentation alone the guitars the drums like oh my god the drums and cute thing the drums and bodies they they blow me away every time um and and on famous prophets you know, the guitars are so refreshing to hear when you've been listening to Mirror to Mirror for a long time. Um, to go to face to face and hear all this refreshing, vibrant instrumentation is fantastic. Um, but, <laughs> but, like, the change is... I'm, <sighs> the change is bother me. Because they take away, I think, the magic of that original album. Uh, for me, at least. And... I know I talked about this just just a, a little minute ago. Will's voice, Will's voice, especially earlier on in the album, sounds so bored. He sounds bored. Like my boy, Will sounds bored. Beach life and death, Will sounds bored. Sober to death, Will sounds bored. Why does he sound so bored? Like he doesn't sound this on Mirror to Mirror. He sounds angsty he sounds you know like he's going through these emotions and actually feeling these things um i just i just find his voice to be boring and that's not to say he doesn't hit you know his vocal ranges you know there's some really st strong vocal performances from will in this album i guess because he had to match what he did previously you know uh, to go back to like um how to make a door less open you really don't have those high high vocal performances anymore from Will, maybe one or two, but for the most part it's kind of this low bassy voice. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, like the changes for these songs, for me, for the wor for the most part, they make the album worse. Uh, they take away what I like about it. So like My Boy is pretty much the same, it's the, it's the same song for the most part. Um, it gets rid of this, this gu guitar lick, which uh, I always enjoyed. Um, to replace it for some strumming, which is a bit more simple, I think takes away from it a little. Beach Life in Death, I will probably give props to the face-to-face -face version. That's probably the better version, and it's mostly because it's unchanged. But what he does change is one of my favourite lyrics of all time from Mirror to Mirror, which is um, how's it go? It goes um, a book of Aubrey Beardsley art corrupted me in youth, and now I'm trapped inside my youth. And you're in love with late stage youth. Thank God for the little things, and then fuck God that the little things I am running out of prayers to sing. Like, and that's gone for some lyric about being in a in a museum or a, a mall at night time. <laughs> I love that lyric. That lyric is fantastic. Thank God for the little things, and then fuck God that the little things. Oh my God. 
that's that's like one of the highlights of Mirror to Mirror, and it's pretty disappointing to hear that it's gone here in place of something that I don't really relate to. Um, uh, but the rest, the rest of the song, and especially the instrumentation, I think brings it up a level, and it's you know it's amped up. I guess if I was to <laughs> really be uh, anal about this, I'd say part one and part three of Beat Life and Death are better on Face to Face, but part two is better on Mirror to Mirror. Okay. Um, stop smoking. For some reason, Will's decided to add parentheses. We love you for this song. I never really understood why he's changing the title like this. It's better in Mirror to Mirror. It's a lo-fi song. It's it suits a lo-fi voice and a lo-fi guitar. Um, that's just how it is. And Will should Will 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 did a good job, but it kind of just sounds like one of his live stream covers. It doesn't really. It doesn't hit me in the same way. Okay. Um, stop smoking. Uh, sorry, not stop smoking. Uh, sober to death. Oh, I'm sorry. The mirror to mirror version is far superior. Uh, the sober to death, and that's because um, on on this version we we lose the Lars towards the end. Okay, we do. We lose the um, just before the the breakdown at the end. We we lose some Lars, and those felt so essential. Uh, and we also have a weird. First of all, like this, this new version has a twelve-string guitar, which I don't mind. I think it's fine. I think it's an interesting choice. I think I prefer the original, but I I'm okay with that. But what I'm not okay with is the change in the chorus. Like it, in the original, it was always um, how's it go? Hold on to the ghost of my body. Um, you know, good lives. And then when he says the words make. You know, good lives make good stories. That's that's where he's um. That's what makes that chorus. The, the way he he he's saying make. I know that's so hard to explain, but it's it's the shout. It's the little shout he does on the word make that makes that chorus work. The problem with this new version is it kind of he doesn't do that, it, and 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 it it throws the rhythm off. <laughs> It's it kind of recenters how the chorus works, and it's not as preferable to me. I think it sounds a bit too jaunty in a, in a, in a weird way. Um, yeah. So and again, we we lose the Lars at the end. Uh, Nervous Young in Humans, hands down, Mirror to Mirror is better. Nervous Young in Humans is downright boring on face to face. I dislike it so much, and I find it so weird. This is the single. It makes no sense. Nervous Young and Humans is built around the guitar and Will humming. It makes absolutely no sense to remove those in favour of some synth line and grumbly vocals. What is going on? It's probably, it, as I said, it's probably my least favourite song on both of the albums, but it's downright unlistenable on Face to Face. And especially that ending monologue is trash. I don't care. Give me galvanism any day. Anyway. Bodies, hmm, kind of a mixed bag because on the one hand, on face to face you get the recurrence of, um, or, you know, of the intro line. That's not what I meant to say. At all coming back at the end, but you also lose that um, mumbly background vocal, which I felt added so much in the original. And I also don't think it builds up as well on face to face. Although, like the, as I said, the drums and the guitar, incredible, absolutely fantastic instrumentation across the board on this album. Um, but Will's, Will's vocals for one, and also just the fact it's not capturing the magic in the same way. Especially on here, like the removal of the um, the, the vocal, like talking bits, you know, in, in the later choruses. Those added so much. Those made it catchy. Those added the layers that you needed. Um, and yeah, when Will's screaming, uh, when we dance, you know, at the end, um, that's not quite as strong. I don't think it works quite as well. And my biggest gripe is the fucking one trait danger line at the end. Fuck you, Will. Why are you trying to insert one trait danger into twin fantasy? This is not okay. This is a serious work of art, Will, okay? And you need to understand it because you, you wrote it. One Trait Danger is fine. It's a, the side act of Car Seat Headrest, I suppose. I don't know. I don't listen to them, really. But um, we get to the end of Bodies, and Will's just having a joke, and it's so out of place for me. 
Make it fine. Make your album funny. Make it sad. Do whatever. Mix them up. That's fine. But to 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 get to bodies, and then before we get to cute thing, there's a one trait danger reference where they're having a laugh. It's so out to place for this album. It makes no sense. I hate it. It's the worst thing about this album. It's terrible. Um, get it gone, honestly. I I skip if I, if when I'm listening to face to face when I get to the the end of bodies I skip because I cannot listen to that it infuriates me it breaks it up too much it makes the album it it makes the album worse so much worse for that one line because it just to me it feels like it's not being taken I don't want to make it out like I think humor can't be injected into serious works of art I just feel like it's out of place for what it is okay. Anyway, uh, cute thing, the drums on Face to Face, fantastic. When they come in after that piano bit, oh my god, brilliant. And I actually really appreciate that Will slowed it down for the intro. I think uh, I enjoy that. I think both versions are fine. Uh, you know, not fine, but I think they, they compare finely. I wouldn't say one's better than the other. I'd say I miss that outro lick that we have on Miracle Mirror. Um, right, on this Face to Face version, we, we just get strummed chords, which are um, okay, but it's just not as good as the outro lick on uh, Mirror to Mirror, I'm sorry to say. High to Death, without a doubt, Mirror to Mirror has the better High to Death, especially the original version with the extended outro with the Juggalang Blues uh, interpolation. Um, the face to face, High to Death, I, I'm sorry, I just don't think it got, <laughs> it got it right. Um, it's okay, but we'd lose that intro where, um, where it's coming in one ear and then it, you know, the guitar line um, then goes in the in the other ear like that. Added stuff that that made me feel stuff. Um, the smoking stop smoking callback in face to face isn't as strong because we don't have um, those uh, those those samples in the background. Um, like they're not going on, so it, it just for me it just doesn't land as well. Um, what else? And the the ending, so we lose that that sort of funeral keyboard synth at the end, which is one of the best parts of the song in Mirror to Mirror. We lose that. Um, we do get the lyrics back, but then it goes on some art rant, which I really do appreciate for the context of this album. It's talking about it, it's basically talking about what the album's about. It's talking about looking at a situation from a different perspective. You know, in, in this case, it's talking about a piece of art and. You know, there's a different intensity uh, that the art takes on them now that they have have well, moved on or grown up or, or whatever. Uh, so you, you can appreciate that for what this album is face to face. Um, but do I enjoy it as much as that funeral keyboard on Mirror to Mirror? Absolutely not. Uh, Famous Prophet Stars. Yeah, I've got I gotta hand it to face to face for famous prophet stars for the instrumentation, for the lyrical changes, for the introduction of Pain Star, which possibly goes on a minute too long, but it's okay. I get it. Will you do this? Um, I'm I'm sad we lose the three transgressions of words, three transgressions of will line towards the end, but I understand that. You know, I understand we can lose that. That's okay. I understand that change is, is I would say, is acceptable. Um, yeah, for the most part, face to face has the better version, the better bass. Like especially when we get to, um, we've got to go back when we get to that. Um, we have eight repeats of that line. When we get to the last four repeats, the bass really amps up in that song, and that's that's fantastic. Um, and it's just it's just an emotional song, especially when it gets the uh, all the all the pain style lyrics with the piano at the end, which was absent from Mirror to Mirror. So yeah, I will I will give props to Face to Face. This has the better version. Uh, and then Twin Fantasies of Those Boys, which is for the most part pretty much the same, um, but I definitely prefer the monologue from Mirror to Mirror. You know, talking about um, waking up from the fantasy and everything and. Uh, just, just flow better for me. So yeah, uh, so, so it's like to ramble on about this album. I, I enjoy it, and and to be honest, face to face is what led me into mirror to mirror. Right, so I, I did how to leave town, and then what did I do? I did how to leave town. Then I think yeah, I went. Did I go mirror to mirror? No, I think I did do face to face first. Anyway. 
this isn't some, you know, oh, I'm an old fan, so I like Mirror to Mirror more. I just think it nails the emotions more. It's, it's as I said, lightning in a bottle. Never to be, never to be redone or recreated. This is a once in a lifetime recording. And face to face, as good as it is, does not meet these levels. And I think makes a few mistakes that 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 takes my enjoyment away from what it is. Um, but obviously, the songs are, are pretty much the same, and it's a great album. And it's kind of led me down the car seat headrest rabbit hole a bit more. So, where do I place face to face? Well, it's definitely not E tier. Definitely not D tier. Definitely not C tier. Is it B tier? Um, is it A tier? Do I think Face to Face is better than, say, Nervous Young Man? Hmm. I think if I was to place Face to Face, it would sit nicely here. Not quite as good as Teens of Style or Teens of Denial, but definitely, I think, appropriately, a rank away from Mirror to Mirror. So, yeah, this is my incredibly bad tier list on e we have making good or less open rank up on d we have uh, disject a member and then on b from west the best we have one three how to leave town and four then on a from west the best we have two little pieces of paper monomania nervous young man living while starving face to face teens of denial uh, it's teens of style sorry teens of denial and then on s tier the best two songs from their discography my back is going me baby and twin fantasy mirror to mirror